Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Welcome back to the Margiela series where we're exploring every single runway show that Martin Margiela produced at his eponymous house. We are halfway done with this series. We have done 20 shows and we have 20 more to go. We find ourselves today in fall winter 1999. We're back to doing showrooms, folks. This is a showroom in the 18th R&D Small and instead of a standard invitation, guests received a fax that had all of the details they needed to get there. It did not take place on a single day, but over the course of a number of different days. For a single season presentation from a brand, this was actually a pretty long time. They had it open for 15 days. Invited guests would make appointments with the Maison and then come at their appointed time into a room that had been painted all white with three rows of movie seats and a screen. Outside, pasted on the door, was the first few scenes of the film's presentation. Thigh-high knitted socks and a model wearing them. Other stills from the film were also printed out and put around the showroom for presentation. Kind of like movie posters. The film, which was made by Marina Faust, who is a long-standing photographer with the Maison, the, the film was made by Marina and it was shot in the same screening room that the guests were actually watching the film in. It featured the iconic Christina DeConnick and Paula Girardi. The video's soundtrack was Timmy Thomas's Why Can't We Live Together, which most people know because it was the sample for the beat for Drake's Hotline Bling. Personally, I like the original a lot more. As always, if you love this series, if you're keeping tabs with it really closely, you need to be watching the full episodes, which are only available on the Patreon. In the extended episodes, we go into the nuances and the details of as many garments and individual pieces of clothing and accessories as we possibly can so that we can trace out the nuances of how the Maison is evolving its aesthetic from a product's perspective over time. There's something like 10 extended episodes for the Margiela series at this point. I put a lot of work into those extended episodes. They are well worth your time and money. You also get a lot of other benefits from the Patreon, but that's the big one as far as this series is concerned. You can join up anytime from the links in all the descriptions for every video that I've ever made. <laughs> As guests arrived, they were served popcorn and little cups of red wine to enjoy while they were watching. Let's, let's actually take a moment, because we haven't done this in many episodes. Let's take a moment to talk about the red wine. It's a siren. Lovely. So red wine was upending a lot of conventions in Paris fashion. It would have been much more normal for uh, champagne to be served or really nice hors d'oeuvres to be served. It was They were playing in a lot still into this kind of 80s and 70s idea of ultra luxury when people were showing up to these shows. So by serving the red wine in these little like plastic cups, that was again bringing Margiela back to the lives of regular women. So to viewers of this series, this shouldn't be anything new. They, they've upended a lot of Paris fashion conventions by letting children make their runway invitations, by hosting the shows in really unconventional locations, and by not allocating assigned seating to people who were more important. Here in the present, that might not seem like a super revolutionary thing, but at the time, these were conventions that were so customary to Paris fashion that it was uh, it was making people mad that they were doing stuff like this. And I don't know if we should look at those things as them being aggressive against the industry or trying to like parody what was already happening. I, I think it was more them saying like, this is how we as a company celebrate the completion of a new show. Celebrate with us. It more leaned into a sincerity rather than a rebellion. And this season, they managed to turn that seasonal celebration into an accessory. All rise. In French wine culture, when a particularly nice vintage was opened, the cork would be hung sideways around the neck of the bottle between two metal prongs on a chain to display its make, its year, and the grapes that went into its creation. These prongs on a chain, or pique bouchon, became the basis of a necklace offered this season. You may be seated. And to honor the coming of this new style of cork necklace, I wore my original cork necklace that was used in one of their first shows. This was a gift that was given to me by a uh, Margiela collector. I uh, tried to give it back like five separate times and he insisted. So um, here I am with this and uh, it's like my favorite thing that I own now. The cork for this season was inscribed in French with the words, Place the cork from the first bottle of wine you drink in the year 2000 here. The year 2000 was approaching and the Maison wanted to mark the occasion of this here, the final season of the 20th century. It is important to note that the fashion calendar is pitched forward, so technically they will do one more show in 1999, but as far as the fashion calendar is concerned, this is the last one. But the, the sentiment here is that these clothes, these accessories, this collection is meant to be the collection that you will wear with you at the turn of the new millennium. The Maison, as always, is very optimistic about the future and they encourage you to wear that optimism around your neck.
and they're re-upping the same symbol that they've held for a while. The, the original cork necklace, this one is from fall winter 1989, and the recurring theme with that kind of cements yet again the, the Maison repeating itself even as we go into a new millennium. The symbol of the cork necklace is such a great encapsulation of the Maison's celebratory side. It's a nice encapsulation of the Maison overall. This is a really unusual season because there are not as many photographs of this one as there would be for other shows that are before or after it. That was of course a huge problem when I first started this series. There were some seasons that had very, very little imagery, so we're just like then, we're working with what we have. Some other garments this season include dress linings as dresses as seen in these lookbook images. Dress linings as dresses are a staple of the Maison and it's been seen as a motif in many other seasons. Using this concept here, using the cork motif again here, these are important because we just got off of the 10-year retrospective show. Every five years the Maison does a retrospective of the last 10 seasons that they've done five years, 10 seasons. And I imagine that many fashion critics and fans of the Maison were wondering if after a 10 year period, they would then switch and kind of start afresh with a totally new set of symbols. The Maison is assuring them with these things here that they are sticking to their roots and doing what they've always done and that they are going to slowly build on the world that they've already established. That slow building can be seen as the lining dresses came with necklaces of the same material attached to the back of the dress this season. An antique silver color was painted onto jeans this season as well as tabbies and jackets as well. A really cool evolution that we saw this season was these thigh-high socks with rubberized holes at the bottom that allowed them to be worn over these platform mules and minimalist jeans that were also released that season. A great recurring thing that Martin would incorporate into his work is these garments that were extremely unique and needed to be paired with other garments in order to create a full look. Unlike a lot of other fashion houses that would pair together items based on their color palette or just their cut, the Maison was releasing a lot of pieces that functionally needed to fit together over one another so that you could have this really distinct, unique look to them. A Megazord, if you will. Another very cool item was this large retro brown corduroy men's vest, which was complete with a collar and a shirt front to cover the chest that was layered over a dress. The full impact of this season can be felt though through the single most iconic piece that they released this season. Oh my gosh, are we doing two? Yes, we are. All rise! Let's fucking go! It's the duvet coat, y'all. In taking everyday objects and transforming them into garments, we here see maybe the best example that the Maison ever did, a down comforter that has been turned into a winter coat. You may be seated or stand for the rest of your life in honor of this, the most excellentest of fashion history items. Blah. Words are so hard. Let's talk about how they made this. Two long detachable sleeves were inserted with zippers into an actual comforter. They didn't make a new comforter for the creation of this piece. In fact, the tag from the Italian manufacturer, Featherlight, was still found on the garment. The edges of the comforter coat were piped with brown cords made of cotton. And better yet, they even created duvet covers for this coat. In the film presentation, you can even see two employees in white coats swapping out the different duvets for the coat one by one. One of them was even created from a typical floral sheet from the 1970s that was over -dyed. And again, that is a callback to the lives of regular people. There was another one that was made from old khaki army blankets. These two fabric duvets even had the same string of buttons that were used to secure them to the coat the way that duvet covers are secured to comforters. There was also this incredible incredible one that was made of a uh, plastic PVC bag, hearkening back to the packaging that bedding comes in traditionally when you buy it from the store. And that's a motif that we've seen repeated since spring, summer 1990, when we started doing the, uh, the, the clothing bag that you would get back from the cleaners as a part of the final outfits that they would put on the runway. I would say it is definitely a callback in that they are continuing to expand the world that they've already developed. And it also had the added benefit of making the coat waterproof. This coat made such a huge splash when it came out that Bill Cunningham, who is the legendary street style photographer for the New York Times, Bill Cunningham did an entire spread of all of the examples that he saw around New York City of women wearing this incredible coat. And besides being a fashion street style photographer, Bill Cunningham had an encyclopedic knowledge of fashion. If Bill was into it, they had truly hit on something special, but Obviously, you don't need me to tell you that. The video closes with a shot of a closed fist wearing long black leather gloves. 
The model opens her hand to reveal two things. First, a tabby mitten with individual thumb and index finger pockets dividing the hands into three parts. Second, a small piece of paper from fortune cookies that read, you will be fortunate in everything you put your hands to. Beautiful, iconic, incredible season this time. Fall, winter 1999 was a massive point for the Maison. And if you want the rest of the details for this one, go join that Patreon. You have a, a link that's appearing somewhere on the screen right here. It takes like 90 seconds to sign up and you get to enjoy a ton of benefits. Like, I mean, as soon as you sign up, you're gonna have hours of content to watch just right off the bat. You also get to join the private Discord server where people who are way more knowledgeable about fashion than me just spend all day talking about fashion, posting inspiration pictures, talking about the projects that they themselves are working on and asking for advice about just the most nuanced stuff. It's crazy how detailed the questions in that server can get and they get like a very full and complete answer to them. Go join it up. Go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I love you enormously. Thank you so much for joining me.